Hello again. Well, a few years ago, I wrote a book called uh, High Impact Christians in a, a Low Expectation World. And that, that book title held two really important truths, that the world does not expect much of the church, but the church is called to impact the world. Now, sadly, the church has, in the course of human history, often impacted the world in negative ways, through political intrigue, through the quest for power, and so on. And yet, in the, in the early days of the church, it was known for something quite different. It was known for the Greek word krestos. Now, that sounds a lot like Christos, which means Christ. You remember that it was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians, followers of Christos, followers of Christ. But Christians were known for something in particular, which was acts of kindness and compassion, which is where the word Christos comes in. Christos is used seven times in the New Testament, and each time it's describing kindness or goodness. Christians were often mistakenly called Christians because people were impacted by their acts of kindness and by their agape love. It was to be the manner in which people were to fulfill the Great Commission. Now, that's still the case today. We're to fulfill the Great Commission. We're to be Great Commission disciples. In fact, this is the fifth and final principle of Kingfisher family. You'll remember that uh, uh, for all churches that count themselves as being a, a part of Kingfisher family, uh, they'll be building their lives on the five principles that we've been exploring. Reaching the lost, encouraging transformation, building healing community, expecting full devotion, and then impacting the world. Now, how do we impact the world? Well by becoming Great Commission Disciples. What does that phrase mean? Well, first of all, what is the Great Commission? It's the charge that was put to the first disciples as they came face to face with the risen Lord Jesus, who said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's how we impact the world. With the heart of Christos, we obey the Great Commission. We become Great Commission disciples. So, what is a Great Commission Disciple? Well, let me give you a snapshot of a, a Great Commission Disciple. First of all, they're prepared to go. Not necessarily to a foreign country or to any particular physical situation. No, the command to go is about forward momentum. It's about not standing still, not settling for what you have and being content to stay in some kind of spiritual holding pattern. Go is about having a mindset, a, a disposition that says, so I run with purpose in every step. That's Paul who wrote that in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. No, dear brothers and sisters, I'm still not all that I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. Having a go mentality is about a mindset of growth. I'm not there yet. I have more to learn more to experience, more steps of faith to take. But I also know that I am not where I was last month or last year. I'm being trusted with more now than I was back then. I'm being challenged by the Lord to do greater things, to trust him more, to step out into deeper water. Jesus said that the plan was 
Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. I start where I am now, Jerusalem. I spread out to those I have a connection with, Judea. As my heart grows more like Christ, I am able to reach out to those who I would normally have avoided, Samaria. And as I continue with this and continue to submit my life to him, he connects me with people and situations that I would not normally have expected to encounter, ends of the earth. All of that comes from being prepared to go wherever he leads. Then, secondly, they're prepared to stand out. The Greek literal trans translation of the Great Commission is, going, therefore, disciple all the nations. Now, that has a very different feel about it to the usual translation of make disciples of all nations. Make disciples. Sounds a bit coercive, doesn't it? A bit make them do it argue them into it. But disciple all the nations has more of a sense of show them by example what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Lead by example. Demonstrate the gospel. That gives you the right to talk about your faith. In this way, disciple the nations. Teach them to obey all that Jesus taught us. And then thirdly, they're prepared to trust. You know, the four most important words in the Bible, I am with you. I am with you to the very end of the age. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when everything is going wrong and it all seems to be against you, do you believe that I am with you? Do you believe that when you feel like the lone Christian voice at work or at college or wherever? Do you believe that when the stand you are taking because you are a Christian is getting you into trouble? I am with you. I am is with you. When they hurled their insults at him, he didn't retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. That's a description of Jesus in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. Those early great Christian, uh, great commission disciples had no plan B other than to follow and to trust in the transforming power of the gospel. They trusted Jesus, often in the face of overwhelming opposition. And with that attitude, with that unflinching trust, they impacted the whole world with the gospel. What is it that really impacts the world? State-of-the-art presentations with lights and videos and loud music? Marketing campaigns that need to be good enough and expensive enough to compete with secular businesses? Those first disciples impacted the world with none of those things. They had no political power, no financial backing, no campaign manager, no social media to spread the word. And yet, within five centuries, Christianity became the dominant religion of the Roman Empire. The Jesus movement, which started in an obscure part of the Roman Empire, in a relatively short period, transformed into a major religion with millions of followers spread out from India in the east, Ethiopia in the south, to Britain in the west. They impacted the world by being prepared to go, by being prepared to stand out, and by being prepared to trust they took the message of the gospel to the ends of the earth with an attitude of Christos and as a response to Jesus' command that they go. And this is what Jesus Christ commanded those of us who started Kingfisher family 30 years ago to do. 
to obey the Great Commission, and in doing so to impact the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Starting with just 12 people in a small rented room, we had no earthly means of achieving anything much. But we had heard God's call to us. His command to go and disciple the nations is burned into our very souls. Kingfisher family has a mandate from Jesus Christ to spread the good news far and wide, to grow disciples of Christ. This is why we've sought to reach out around the world to encourage churches and ministries in many different countries to provide resources where we can to encourage Christians to grow and leaders to develop. We've partnered with people in Africa, in India, in Europe, in the Far East, doing all that we can to impact the world. It's a founding principle of Kingfisher family of churches and in those churches and ministries that feel called to join us are doing so with the understanding that they are committing to impact the world as well. They're committing to become great commission disciples with the mandate to go, therefore, discipling all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. You know, I started this series on the five principles of Kingfisher family, saying that everything in the world has changed since we started. The internet has been born, social media has arrived, YouTube, Google, cell phones have all appeared. Live streaming of church services is now possible. Persecution has risen around the world. Everything has changed. But Jesus Christ has not changed. His word has not changed. And the five principles he's called us to build Kingfisher upon have not changed. As we move forward into the new era that lies ahead of us, we are called to still have these five principles as the bedrock of our faith. Look to the rock from which you are cut and to the quarry from which you are hewn, says Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. And so we move forward. We are 30 years old and moving into the fullness of all that the Lord has prepared for us. But whatever the future holds, we will have the bedrock of these five principles. What a great time to be part of Kingfisher family of churches. I'm so glad that you're on board. And may you and I continue to impact the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Our Father, I thank you that you have given us this mandate in Kingfisher family. Go into all the world and make disciples. I thank you for that mandate, Lord, that we stand here today 30 years on from receiving that call and we can see uh, some of the fruit of that around the world, in Central America, Panama, in India, Africa, the Far East, and so on. We thank you that we can see the power of the gospel spreading and growing around the world. We thank you for the, the thousands that have been reached by your Holy Spirit through us around the world. And we pray, Lord, that you would cause us to never settle, to never stop until the whole world is practicing full devotion to Jesus Christ. We have a mandate to go. We don't have a mandate to stop. So fill us with fresh zeal, Lord, all of us who call ourselves part of Kingfisher family. Fill us with a fresh 
desire and passion to reach out with the good news of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for this amazing calling in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope this series has been a help to you uh, in understanding what Kingfisher Family is all about and how it's, it's built on just these five principles. And I hope it really gives you encouragement to see that where God calls, he opens the way and enables it to happen. And I hope you'll stay with us. We have many other teaching videos on our website, uh, kingfisherfamily.org. Uh, just look at the, the, uh, the resources uh, page on that. And we'll be back next week with a whole new series of teachings. So join us then. In the meantime, have a great week serving the Lord.